start this morning session by a continuation of uh, Laurent's lectures, uh, and then we'll continue with the uh, presentation. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, so let me first say that for those of you who were not there uh, yesterday, uh, the only thing that you need to remember from, uh, to, to know from uh, what I uh, said yesterday is the definition of sprays, which I will recall here. So sprays are actually uh, complex flows, or one can say multi-phase flows, in which droplets, usually a very large number of very small droplets, are <coughs> surrounded by a gas. And by extension, The word is sometimes also used in the case when the droplets are in fact not liquid but solid. So the droplets are sometimes replaced typically by dust specks. Okay, so yesterday I presented uh, two levels of modeling um, in which it is uh, for which let's say uh, were devised to, to treat the situation of uh, sprays but which were actually also valid for uh, different multi-phase flows and for example the macroscopic model that I presented which is uh, some uh, Euler like system of equations in which the volume fraction of each phase is uh, appearing under the form of a certain quantity which is named alpha <coughs> usually. So this model is, uh, is used in the case of sprays but also in the reverse case in which you have bubbles in, uh, in a liquid. So uh, yeah, champagne style flows. Uh, and it's also true for the microscopic modeling that I presented uh, yesterday. Today, I will really write models which were written only for sprays. And this is sometimes presented, at least by me, <coughs> as a mesoscopic, some kind of a mesoscopic modeling for the sprays. And uh, this means, from the mathematical point of view, that there is a coupling between uh, a kinetic equation and a fluid equation. So it can be named kinetic fluid coupling. And the, the engineers who are really interested in the numerical analysis of those things, they rather call it Eulerian Lagrangian. Both this terminology is a little dangerous because the, the two words are really used in many, many different instances. It's uh, a bit confusing sometimes. Anyway, the, uh, <coughs> what I will present now is something which was sort of announced in the book of Williams. So this is a very famous book of uh, uh, combustion theory, which is dating from uh, 74, and there is a very uh, brief passage in which he says that uh, it would be good when the combustion uh, is, um, is happening in a spray, it would be really good to couple somehow a Vlasov type equation with um, some fluid equation. And he writes very briefly a very short equation, which you can now recognize in the modern world of the sprays. But my feeling is that the, the, the first one who really wrote down completely the systems that I will now present is O'Rourke, uh, like this. And uh, <coughs> he really worked on this in his uh, PhD thesis, and it was in the early 80s. 
At that time, he was employed in Los Alamos, so he was probably interested in, uh, uh, let's say, nuclear industry uh, applications. But uh, then he turned to more to combustion theory, and he was the, the main writer of a code, of a numerical code, which is extremely famous in the world of um, engines, let's say, for engines for car, and especially diesel engines for a car. And this code is called Kiva. And if you want the, if you want to download the version, the basic version, it's something which is free, and you can you can get it, and you can uh, also get the documentation, which is like 100 pages. And uh, it's really fascinating to see all what is in, inside this code, and it is just the basic version. And if you want now the version which is really used by the by the guys who are designing the engine. Then you will have to pay like maybe uh, it's probably ten of millions of euros. So, so this is a code which is really used everywhere. And what I will now present is really, in some sense, the, ske the skeleton of the it's the equations which are which are solved uh, in this uh, in this code. So, uh, O'Rourke in his thesis he proposes some kind of uh, hierarchy of models. And uh, this hierarchy is, um, is presented according to the, let's say, the, the typical amount of droplets inside the spray. So uh, if you recall uh, uh, how I uh, denoted the volume fraction of droplets yesterday, Alpha of T and X was the volume fraction of gas, and 1 minus alpha is the volume of droplets. So, here 1 minus alpha is the volume of droplets, the volume fraction of droplets. And I will write, so there is a whole hierarchy which can be written down, I will write only two elements of this hierarchy. So on this board I will write the equations which are sometimes called thin spray equations. I will write <coughs> thin spray equations. Thin meaning that the, uh, the volume fraction of droplets is not that big. Actually, when you look precisely at what it means, what it means is uh, that uh, since the typical um, mass uh, per volume of the liquid is about 1,000 times the typical mass per volume of the gas. Uh, thin sprays correspond to the situation in which the volume fraction of droplets is extremely small, but the mass fraction of droplets is significant with respect to the mass fraction of the gas. Okay. So in that case, the equations which are proposed are really, in some sense, they co correspond to coupling directly the Euler or Maddie Stokes equations that I briefly presented uh, yesterday with the Vlasov equation through only one term, which is the drag, the drag force between the two phases. So let me write it first uh, in the case of uh, compressible inviscid gas. And this is really what is written in the Kiva code of uh, O'Rourke. So I will denote, like yesterday, by rho j and u j the density and the velocity of the gas. So j is for gas. So it writes like this, you have the conservation uh, of mass, and then you have the conservation of momentum. So, as you remember, the, this is just Newton's law uh, telling you that acceleration and forces uh, are related, and uh, so this term will always appear everywhere, 
And now you have to guess what are the forces. So like in a common gas, you have the pressure that you will still put here. And in our case, this pressure will be just a constant times uh, rho j to some power, which I will call beta. And now, uh, because of the presence of the droplets inside the gas, you have to add the effect of the droplets on the gas. And this effect is given by a formula that I will write in one minute. And then you couple this <coughs> with the equation, the Vladov equation for the density of droplets. So now F is a function of T, X, and V, like always in kinetic theory, V being the velocity of the droplets and X uh, their position. So it starts as always by dt plus v gradient x. And if you remember what I said yesterday, you have to put here the drag force multiplied by f, and this is equal to zero. Okay? And this makes sense. Uh, as you may remember, this drag force will depend on v, so it has to be inside the divergence. Now the term that I will put here and here will be uh, almost exactly the opposite uh, one of another, up to some constant, um, because they represent the same force which is acting on the gas and on the, on the droplets. And it is something which basically tells you that the velocities of both phases tend to become equal uh, at a rate which actually depends on many things. So it can depend on rho j. It can depend also on the relative velocity, that is v minus uj. But in the most basic model, uh, you can suppose that it is just proportional to rho j, and that's it. Okay. So uh, in order to have uh, uh, notations which are consistent with the rest of what I will present. Let me write it in this way. So, here I will write this and here this. And I will briefly comment. So, uh, here, capital F is in general a function which depends on rho j and on the modulus of v minus uj. And as I just said, the most basic example consists in taking F proportional to rho j with a coefficient of proportionality which can actually uh, in the simplest cases, be computed, and it has to do with 6 pi, this is called Brinksman law. And this law is computed by supposing that the gas is a Stokes gas, which is in some sense completely orthogonal to the hypotheses which are here. Uh, so, because of this, instead of putting this value, usually people do measurements and they put a value <coughs> which is uh, fitted from, uh, from measurements. So this is the part which, let's say, will be different in each code, because uh, for each application there will be some measurements made and uh, the function will be fitted. Okay, anyway, this quantity is always multiplied by the quantity uj minus v or v minus uj, depending on where you put it in the equation, and this is really the <coughs> mathematical, uh, this, let's say, uh, uh, way of saying that the velocities tend to become equal with time. Okay. Finally, uh, in this equation here, you have to, dis to, to divide by m, which is a mass of a droplet. And since the droplets uh, are assumed to have a common radius r, this mass can be computed as uh, this, which is the volume of the droplets, multiplied by 
a quantity which is sometimes called rho L, which is the uh, mass per volume uh, of the liquid. Okay. So all of these are constants. Uh, but here the, the M does not appear in this equation here, uh, uh, which has a slightly different meaning from this one. This is an equation for number densities. This is an equation for mass densities. So it explains the, the reason why you don't have the M here. Uh, next, one has to uh, observe that here you have an equation which is given at time t and point x, and so you have to integrate with respect to all possible velocities of the droplets which are at time t and point x. Okay? So it's a reason why you have this integral in V here. Now, this, as I told you previously, this system here, which is so, some, sometimes called Blasov Euler by some authors. This is really the skeleton of the, what you can find in the, in the Kiba code of Oblige. Uh, I also wanted to write down the, uh, the equations which correspond to an uh, incompressible viscous gas. And this one is sometimes called uh, Vlasov Navier Stokes for obvious reasons. It will be, let's say, it's a coupling of an equation which is very close to this one with uh, an equation here in which you replace the compressible owner by the incompressible Navier Stokes. <coughs> so I will check that my notations are okay. So, in order to have something which can be compared directly to the previous system, I will write here the incompressibility condition, which is recovered from this one, if you suppose that rho j is constant. Then you have the equation for the velocity, and uh, in the context of the, Navier-Stokes, of the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation, you rather write the uh, evolution of the velocity, not of the momentum, so that the t here is not uh, to be compared with this, but rather with this divided by rho j. Okay. Anyway, this is uh, this is something which is free in the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation, so we do not have to give any law for this, uh, and we add the uh, viscosity term uh, since we suppose that this is viscous and finally since uh, we look at the equation for the velocity and not for the momentum uh, the drag term which represents the effect of the droplets on the gas has to be divided by the density of the gas which is now a constant in, in the incompressible setting so I take exactly the formula that is here, <coughs> and I divide it by rho j. Rho j is a constant in this model. And the, the Vlasov equation is identical. With the same, with the same uh, value for capital F and small m. So all of this represents the so-called thin sprays, and uh, we will see tomorrow that both are the equations for which it is uh, possible to provide a reasonable. Uh, derivation from basic principles, or at least principles in which uh, most people believe in, um, by suitable scalings. And what I will write now is the sequel of the hierarchy of equation when uh, one considers 
uh, volume fraction of droplets increasing, and it's sometimes called fixed spray equations. So those ones are really difficult to obtain from basic principles, but they are more directly linked to the macroscopic equations that I showed yesterday. So in some sense, those ones are rather close to the microscopic equations, and those ones are rather close to the macroscopic equation. And to go from these ones to the one that I will write now, basically one supposes that the volume fraction is not so small now. It is small, but not extremely small. And if you ask the engineers what this means, they will tell you that what I will now write is working as long as 1 minus alpha is not over 0.1. So 0.1 means that you already have a large number of droplets in a given volume. And if, you, if your droplets are in fact uh, dust specs, you can see that at 0.5, you already have something which is completely packed. Okay. So it's not a surprise that when you come close to 0.2, 0.3, etc., then the description by droplets is uh, not really uh, meaningful anymore. And it's the reason why all what I write now is really specific to sprays and cannot be used, let's say, for bubbles in a, in a liquid or whatever. Okay. Anyway, let me try to explain what this is. So I will actually take the equations which are here. I will not present the incompressible case. I will just present the compressible one. And uh, so this is... Uh, only for compressible in this seed. And the idea is to use the same, um, the same uh, representation of alpha inside the derivatives as the one which was presented in the macroscopic equations. So, if you remember, instead of putting uh, rho j, we now put alpha rho j inside the equation. So that the conservation of mass is now written in this way. And the conservation of momentum is written with the same principles. So the first term will be exactly equal to this one, except that you have the alpha inside. Rho g u g. Rho g u g. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Thanks. Uh, and then, so here I will not write immediately what you should put. Uh, I will rather write first the equation satisfied by the by the droplets. So I hope that it's still possible to, to see. So for the droplets, you start with a Vlasov equation in which you modify the force in the following way. So it's still a Vlasov equation. So write it this way. Here I put the force which is acting on the droplets. So the first part is identical to what is written here. So it's F over M times Uj minus V. And this represents the effect of the drag, as in the case of the thin sprays. But uh, people who are interested in thick sprays, they usually add a term which looks like this. So it is uh, the gradient of the pressure divided by rho L. Rho L is a constant here. This is the mass per volume of the liquid. Yeah. Why is rho L not the integral of F? It's not, uh... No, rho L, one has to be a little careful here. Yeah. 
uh, one should not uh, con be confused between the volume fraction of the, of the droplet here and the mass per volume of the droplet, which is a number which depends only on the state of the liquid, not of the, not the, of the radius of the droplets. Okay. It's a little confusing, I wish. But uh, since you asked this question, then let me add immediately that here, 1 minus alpha is just this quantity. Okay. This is coherent with the fact that the volume fraction of the droplet is the volume fraction of the droplet. Just seeing it. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, yeah, another way of saying that, by the way, consists in, in forgetting completely about alpha and replacing alpha systematically by 1 minus this quantity in the equations. Okay. You can do that. But if you do that, then you're completely lost <laughs> when you try to do anything. Anyway, uh, so why, why uh, adding this uh, gradient P divided by rho L? Uh, you can see it as, uh, let's say, uh, displacement force for the, the droplet, which is due to the presence of the gas, or Archimedes force, if you prefer, something like this. Okay? And it's something that, in principle, is uh, negligible in the case when uh, the gas is occupying the totality of the volume, which is the limit of the system when alpha is going to one, like you have above. Now, uh, it remains to, to write down the terms which are here. So, actually, there are two ways to do that, which are completely equivalent, but I think it's worth uh, it's worth writing it uh, in both cases. So, uh, let me try to use the right sign. <coughs> so, here there is no minus. Here, basically, dTUJ is like minus UJ, not uh, plus UJ. Well, anyway. Uh, so that's the first way to do it. Also in the incompressible form. Also in the incompressible form, of course. Right. This is like the original. Um, so this is the first way of writing uh, this, and as you can see, if you write it in this way, you use only the reaction due to this part in the equation here. And you can wonder why you do not use also the other term. So the reason for that is that actually this is completely equivalent to writing things in this way. So this time I will try to write it. Seriously, and it is like this. So this is another way of writing the same thing, because here, this quantity here will be exactly equal to 1 minus alpha gradient P. And this is exactly the complement to this one to, be, to, to, to get the gradient. Okay. So if yesterday you were not really convinced by why you should have alpha in front of the gradient P, gas and 1 minus alpha in the liquid, in the macroscopic equations. Uh, this is a way of sort of uh, convincing oneself that uh, if now you believe that you should put gradient P, then the fact that at the end we get alpha gradient P is linked to the fact that in the force you also have <coughs> 1 minus alpha gradient P. All of this is not extremely convincing anyway, because uh, there is no proper way of deriving this system from basic principles. 
uh, but I think it is uh, it is a good point that this system uh, has something to do with the macroscopic system. That is, uh, is there is some kind of internal coherence between both the so-called free equations and the macroscopic system that I wrote yesterday. I will try to show it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so, perhaps a naive question. I was wondering if you start monokinetic, if you start with a monokinetic mm -hmm. situation, uh, do you keep monokinetic? Uh, so, in that case, I think that yes. I would say so. Yes, and because this is monodispersed. That is, you have uh, yeah. the force which is acting with. Uh, because I was wondering, shouldn't there be some some uh, ingredient to, if, you, if you take monokinetic particles? I did that numerically, and mm -hmm. then you some uh, meaning what I mean is the interaction with the viscous which will disperse the mass of the <coughs> So, I mean, in this model, there is nothing in the equation which, of which course, would, uh, would lead to that. In, uh, in, in just one second, I will write a term which, in a way, will do that. Okay. <laughs> so, it's actually a very good introduction to the fact that here you should not put zero, actually. But you should put, you should put some uh, interaction term between the particles. And this is linked to the bad idea that if now you take into account explicitly the volume fraction of droplets, then this is, a, this is an, an hypothesis which makes it unavoidable that there will be collisions between the droplets. Okay, because in the, in the boltzmann grad scaling, you need much less, I mean, you have a scaling in which at the end you have a volume which is zero, and still you have collisions. So here you have a volume which is more than zero, so you should have collisions. And in fact, if you if you believe in the boltzmann grad scaling, somehow those collisions should be dominant. I mean, you should have uh, some some scaling factor here which should be large. And of course, those collisions they will uh, uh, except if you are, I mean, uh, uh, monokinetic in such a way that it is absolutely exact, it will disperse the the velocity. Uh, I will not write down what is Q uh, for you. Uh, you can think of the Boltzmann operator, but since both objects are macroscopic, it is rather the Boltzmann operator related to granular uh, gases that you should use, that is, you should use the Boltzmann operator with a loss of kinetic energy in each collision with a restitution coefficient. Uh, if the particles are solid, then uh, this restitution coefficient should be something which is rather increasing with relative velocity uh, because uh, then the loss of kinetic energy is due to deformation of the, <coughs> of the object. If it is liquid, it's not so clear because uh, in the liquid the, the energy will be dissipated because of viscous effects in the liquid and so it's uh, really not clear to, to see what happens and actually I don't think that there is any let's say, a credible theory about uh, what should be the restitution coefficient in the Boltzmann operator. So it's a good uh, reason not to write it down. Um, actually, in the Kiva code, is still, so he uses fin spray uh, equation, but he still puts uh, a Boltzmann operator, and sometimes people call that moderately fixed spray. Uh, equation, but I don't want to add one more <laughs> thing in the hierarchy. Okay. Uh, so let me say that both equations uh, are really used in practice, and for example, it is what is used in the uh, in the study of the effect of medical sprays in the lung when you look at the uh, upper part of the lung and. Uh, you suppose that the amount of spray which is uh, given is quite high. That is, uh, if you have a high dose of spray, then uh, it's reasonable to use those equations. Usually, people say that uh, the Navier part of the equation, or the convection part of the equation, uh, is useful when you're still in the mouth or close to the mouth. And then, when you go down, 
uh, you can sort of drop the, this part here and the viscosity effect uh, become uh, dominant so that you can use the Stokes equation. But uh, Bertrand maybe you know that <laughs> much better than me. Uh, anyway, this is really used in some simulations uh, for this. Uh, the fixed Fourier equations are much less used and uh, <coughs> The reason for that is that people think that uh, they might trigger instabilities like the macroscopic model for multiphase flows, so they are less, let's say, uh, uh, confident in their <coughs> interest. They, they are used in the nuclear industry, but uh, let's say it's much more difficult to find papers on, on these models than on the models I wrote on the, on the, on the board. Okay, so uh, what I would like to do uh, today is to show you um, what are the math which are uh, known for the <coughs> systems which are on the upper part uh, of the board. And I will present two results. So, uh, The first one will be for the compressible euler vlasov equation and it's something that I did together with Céline Baranger uh, a little more than 10 years ago. Let's see if I learned correctly. Yeah. The second one will be devoted to the, uh, to the case of the incompressible magic stocks equation. So, they, I want to give you at least one uh, precise statement. So, this is you to Céline Baranger and myself, and it was done a little more than 10 years ago. Uh, the idea is the following. So, you take the system here. Uh, you suppose that uh, the different parameters are given, so here you have C, uh, M, R, Rho L, and Beta. So all those numbers are given, okay, and strictly positive. Um, you pick an integer which is different from 1, uh, 0, 1, and 2, so an integer which is at least 3. And you take initial data, uh, so let's call them rho zero and rho zero u zero, which goes from R three to some uh, set that you call J, and which is a relatively compact set. <coughs> Uh, a relatively compact open set of uh, zero infinity times R three. So, <coughs> like this is a couple of those things. So, in other words. You suppose that rho zero is bounded away from zero uh, initially and is bounded above. And rho zero u zero is bounded. Okay. Uh, then you suppose that rho zero minus one and u zero <coughs> belong to HS of R three. So you suppose that you have at least three derivatives in L2, and you take the initial datum for the, for the droplet, the F0, uh, you suppose that it goes from R3 times uh, R3 to R+, plus, so it is uh, non-negative initially, and it belongs to uh, C1 with compact support and HS 
of R3 times R3. Okay. So you suppose that the droplets are, let's say, in a, in a compact set of R3 initially. So the gas is, uh, let's say, uh, constant at infinity and at density 1, and the droplets are regrouped uh, at finite distance somewhere. So if you suppose this on the initial data, uh, and finally you suppose that capital F here is just a constant times rho j, which is the simplest possible model, then <coughs> there exists a time t, let's call it uh, capital T, uh, such that there exists a unique solution of the Lazar-Fogler system well, of course, such that the initial data are coherent and you, what you can say on the smoothness of the solution is the following so uh, rho j and rho j u j they belong to c1 of 0 t with value in uh, some g prime with g prime having the same uh, properties as j that is a relatively compact open set of 0 infinity times r3 I will not rewrite it uh, and rho j minus 1 uj belong to an infinity in time with value in hs of r3 and f lives in the same space the hs being now for both position and velocity so this is a theorem which tells you basically that the vlasov euler uh, Equation is a system which is uh, well posed for a small time. Okay. Uh, so let me comment briefly about this. Uh, first, I will not show the proof, I will not even uh, give you a, a written idea of how to, to get the proof. Let me just say that the ingredients of the proof are, uh, in some sense, the mixture of the same proof when you have no droplets, and this is a, a classical theory of, uh, let's say, hyperbolic systems of conservation laws, which have been known for maybe 50 years now, I would say. And the uh, study of the Blasov equation in which you do things that I will present briefly for the other case, um, which are more coming from the theory of the Blasov Poisson equation but which are also quite classical, and then uh, it is a coupling of the two things which lead to some technicalities. And you can feel the technicalities by looking at the assumptions and results. Uh, the HS is really coming from the theory of uh, hyperbolic systems, and so you, you, you would get exactly the same assumption for the systems without the droplets, whereas the C1C that you have here is more reminiscent of what you have in the glass of Poisson uh, system. And so at the end, uh, uh, you get something, the result as well as the proof is really a mixture of the two theories. Uh, let me say that uh, this is not extremely satisfying in the sense that it's still only a small time result. And you can wonder if it's possible to get better. So the first thing to have in mind is that 
any result will include the same result if uh, small f is equal to zero. Okay. So you cannot hope to get better than what you know on uh, the Euler system in the isentropic case, let's say. And if you look at what is known for this uh, system, then actually you have um, something which is specific to this system, which is the theory uh, by, uh, by Liperna and then uh, Lyons Pertam Tanmor, uh, which tells you that because it's a system of only two equations, if you are in dimension uh, one, uh, then uh, you can use uh, compacted, compensated compactness and uh, get weak solutions. And so this is a theory which is uh, now really uh, uh, quite easily readable. For example, the paper by Jonsbertam Tadmor, which is really specific to this uh, system, is uh, something which can be read without big difficulties now, because they really work a lot on the initial proof by Duperta. And uh, unfortunately, I was not able to, let's say, to couple it with the with the Vladov equation, equation. So, my feeling is that it's, it, I mean, uh, it seems that the, the, the obstruction is really technical, and I have a good hope that this can be done at some point. And actually, I know that certain uh, groups are really working on this, so there is, I think, a good hope to see the result appear at some point. Another direction which could be looked at but it's much more technical. It would consist in looking at the theory of a small total variation solution, which is a theory by Gleam. And um, let's say in this direction, uh, the, the difficulty is that it's uh, already extremely technical when you do not have the droplets. So it needs really a specialist of the theory to try to. <coughs> so I, I don't think that. Any group is really working on this issue, so I'm not too optimistic about uh, what will happen there. Uh, let me say that finally, if the dimension is more than one, really the small time solutions is the only thing which is known. So I cannot see in dimension bigger than one how to get better than this in the state uh, of the in the current state of the theory of the hyperbolic conservation laws. Okay. Well, anyway. I would be glad if anyone has any idea about, <laughs> about this. Uh, so, let's say, this is not extremely difficult. What I like about it is, in some sense, that it's a sort of a reassurance that the system can really be used in a reasonable way uh, in computations. And so, uh, let's say, if you look at the, at the Kiva code, uh, it's like, this is really the core of the of the computation, and then you have like uh, 1,000 extra effects which are included, and uh, the hope is that really the core is uh, stable, and so that the rest should also have some stability. I would like to add that uh, Julien Mathieu made an extension of this uh, in which you can include somehow the collisions, and this is really related to uh, the methods of uh, Yan Wu uh, of perturbative theory for the, for the Boltzmann equation. And also, I would like to quote another result, which is actually a negative result, uh, which tells you that you may have blow up in certain situations, uh, which suggests that you can have shocks, and this really makes sense uh, when you look at the equation. And this is due to a random choice, and this was done uh, yeah, a few years ago now. Uh, now I would like to spend a little more time on the incompressible viscous case, which I think is more interesting from the point of view uh, of analysis, even if it's not uh, that difficult to identify the, uh, I mean the, the, the main steps of, of the proof. And so I would like to write another theorem, which is ded dedicated to this uh, uh, to this case. And so this was done together with Laurent Boudin. Uh, Ayman uh, Moussa and Céline Ramon. <coughs> and uh, it runs like this. 
So once again, you take uh, the, you look at the parameters appearing uh, up there, you see that you can take no new and rho, rho j as given numbers, uh, the same for m. And for capital F, now you will take uh, just a constant. And this is, uh, this is actually coherent with this assumption here, since, of course, in the incompressible case, rho j is a constant itself. Okay. So, uh, under these assumptions, uh, you now take uh, initial data which are satisfying the following. So, you take u0 in L2. So now this is done on the torus, but it's just for uh, because we were too lazy to write it uh, in R3. Uh, and you take F0 positive such that 1 plus V square F0 uh, lies in uh, L infinity. So you ask some, uh, some decay in velocity for the, for the, the phase space density. And I think that's it. So um, the, the result tells you that this time you have uh, global solutions, but there is no uniqueness. Uh, actually, it includes a $1 million price. <laughs> Before I go to show you the next. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> there exists a weak solution of uh, the Blasov Nadia Stokes system. And uh, this weak solution. Uh, this weak solution, sorry, uh, lives in, so for u, it lives in L2, so uh, for, uh, it is L2 lock in time. with value in uh, H1. So like this, and in L infinity in time with value in L2. So those are really the uh, what you expect of the Lorentz solution of the incompressible Navier Stokes equation. Uh, remember that H1 is included in L6. Uh, in dimension 3. And for f, you have an infinity bound, which, if you write it between 0 and t, is of the form exponential 3 times t times F0 in L infinity. Now, this uh, result is uh, a sort of a direct extension of the, of the low resolution of the Nagy Stokes equation, in which you take into account the coupling. And once again, you have to work a little on the Glasov equation. And you can use, I would say, classical tricks of the Blasov Poisson uh, theory in order to show that uh, it sort of combines well. And at the end, you can show that the LNQ bounds uh, are propagated and that it makes sense with those, um, with those uh, assumptions. It really makes sense to define the, the terms, the new terms with respect to the, to the Navier Stokes equation, which are like uh, capital F times V minus UJ times F over rho J. So if you remove the constants, 
is just v minus uj times f. And as you can see, you have to define the integral of vf dv on one hand. And this is very classical. It's already something that you have to do in the level of Poisson theory. But also, you have to be able to define uj times integral of f dv. And since what you know on uj is that it is in L2 with value in L6, you have to be able to show that you can multiply something which is in L2 with value in L6 with something which is the, uh, the mass, the local mass at point t, at time t and point x, of a density which is an infinity and which satisfies some energy inequality. So this means you have to multiply some LP with value in LQ spaces and you have to check that uh, it is coherent. So this we will check uh, briefly uh, tomorrow. What I would like to add is that um, this is uh, directed to the, directly related to the energy uh, inequality that I will now write down, and I will stop there for today. So the energy inequality tells you exactly this. for, let's say, a given time t, what it tells is the following. If you take the kinetic energy of the gas plus the kinetic energy of the droplets, so this is this quantity, you take its derivative, then you end up with z With the notation that I have, I, uh, I hope I'm not mistaken, but I think, uh, yes, I multiply by rho j here, so you have also a rho j at this level. So this is a dissipation due to viscosity that you already have in the resolution for the Minnesota equation. And you have an extra term which explains uh, how uh, energy is dissipated because of the interaction between the droplets and the gas by the drag force. And this term looks like this. So it is V minus Uj to the square times F, times the capital F, times F dV dx. So this is a term which is really coming out of the interaction between the gas and the droplets. And thanks to the sign which is minus here and which tells you that it is really a dissipation, then you can control those two things and hopefully this is enough uh, to show that the terms which are written here are well defined. We will check that uh, quickly uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, this is just a question of uh, interpolation between LP and LP spaces. Okay, maybe I just add a few names uh, at this level. So, this one has not been studied a lot, but this one has received a lot of attention, and I cannot quote everybody. But there are many uh, results which have the same flavor as this one. And uh, for example, there is one by uh, uh, Anoshenko and Admute de Montel. There is one by Amdash. And there is a series of papers by uh, Houdon, Jabin, and Vasseur, um, which have a slightly different setting, but which give uh, results which are close uh, to this one. Uh, there have been uh, more recent studies which also, uh, let's say, uh, enable to have uh, a few extensions uh, of this which uh, have a certain interest. And uh, what I would say uh, as a final word, this time it's probably the final one, <laughs> uh, is that the, if you want to show the weak stability of the system, it's actually rather easy. And uh, the main technical difficulty is to find a good approximation procedure for building up the, the solution. So you can try various things like a Galapin approximation or other types of approximations, but 
the difficulty is really to respect the, uh, the energy inequality that you have here in the approximation, and it's not so easy because somehow you have to respect the uh, exchanges between the, the two phases, and you cannot do things which are completely independent for the, for the small f and for the gas. Okay, I propose to stop. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. So, of course, in, in this setting here, the, what is not saying, but uh, which is implicit, is that the time t here is the time before the shocks. No, no, of course, right? Before the shocks. No, no, I know, I know. Right now. Then, uh, I think it's, uh, it's quite interesting to see the simulations in order to see uh, what happens when you have shocks. And yes, there is, there is an interaction between the shocks and the, and the droplets. It's difficult to be more specific than this, but yes, it plays a role, and the shocks are really there, and uh, you have, numerically you have to, to handle them, as you would handle them for the, for the system and for the entropy system. Yeah. 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 So you said that they use for the since spray equation, it's used for combustion, like yeah. so how do you model combustion in like for the Density is big. Uh, so, is the so typically, I can say with a few words what is in the Kiva code. Okay. So, first, you have uh, air plus uh, fuel. Yeah. The fuel yeah. is a droplet, yeah, this but they evaporate. Okay. And so, actually, the gas is a mixture of air and fuel, which is uh, something you have to take into account in the equation. <coughs> and then, you have to include the chemical reactions. Inside the, inside the equation, which is a source term for the energy equation, which is not written down here. Yeah, okay. So, so you have to write the energy equation and use the, the chemistry as a source term. Okay, so there's an energy equation. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, of course. It's, uh, yeah. okay. it's a core of everything. <laughs> We're just too lazy to. <laughs> okay, one more question. So, let's present the question. Thank you very much.